So we are honored and privileged to have uh, Sri Hegde ji with us today. It's a, an amazing coincidence that he has been able to make it to talk to all of you. Uh, we were thinking about Raghuram ji not being in the last day here, but we are very honored to have him here today. Vedant will introduce uh, him and then uh, we'll have the privilege to hear from him. Professor Bele Monapa Hegde. Padma Bhushan Professor Hegde received his MBBS as a gold medalist from Madras University and completed his MD from Lucknow University. He underwent advanced training in cardiology at Harvard Medical School. He is now the fellow of all Royal Colleges and the American College of Cardiology. He then served in Mangalore and Manipal for 45 years long years, occupying with distinction the posts of Professor of Medicine Dean, and finally as a Vice-Chancellor of Manipal University. Professor Hagde is a prolific writer and his articles are frequently published in various magazines and newspapers and his talk shows are sought after in the electronic media. Professor Hagde has penned nearly 35 books and over 3,000 articles in lay press. During the last decade, Professor Hagde, along with 15 world-renowned scientists, some of them even Nobel laureates, have been publishing a journal titled Journal of the Science of Healing Outcomes, of which he is the founder, editor-in-chief. Late Professor Rustam Roy, considered to be the father of nanoscience, was Professor Hegde's mentor, and had helped Professor Hegde to start the journal. Professor Hegde's service to society through Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan and its activity are legendary. Professor Hegde has been the recipient of numerous national and international awards, including the most prestigious award of India, Padma Bhushan, which was conferred by the President of India in 2010. In recognition of his outstanding contributions as a dedicated teacher in the true Guru tradition, a physician par excellence with encyclopedic knowledge, original researcher, a medical philosopher, and an able administrator, the Sri Venkateshwara Institute of Medical Sciences, State University, presented Professor B. M. Hegde, the chairman for the award of the honorary degree of Doctor of Philosophy in 2011. Yet, with all this knowledge, he is a simple down-to-earth man, and that is the greatest aspect of his personality. There is so much more to talk about him, but due to time constraints, I will let his speech be his introduction. Without much ado, I invite Professor Hegede to bless us. That is not the idea, actually. The message has to go to this, uh, this, this generation. <laughs> because catch them young, as they say. You know, the world is going in a totally different direction thanks to the claptrap around the so-called modern technology and modern science and what have you. Uh, many of you must have read this book. If you have not, I will give you a book which you must read because it really makes you a good human being. This is a book by a professor of science philosophy in the London School of Economics, late <coughs> professor in the University of Chicago and he ended up in the University of Zurich and he is a physicist, a very great physicist. He writes his beautiful book called Against Method, Against Method. That's a fascinating book. And his name is Paul Feyerabend. Paul wrote this beautiful book just to say how the so-called Western scientific temper has destroyed humanity's humanness. And that's why all of you having come to this country and made it big, rightly so, because you know you all come in such <coughs> green pastures. It's only the hard working who go out in such a greener pastures. And it's so nice of you to have thought of your roots back. Because now the Western science is looking at the West, at the East. I have a friend of mine who is my co-editor in chief and who is a double Nobel laureate and he is the permanent director till death of the Max Planck Institute who started life with Albert Einstein and he did his PhD with uh, uh, Edward Teller. His name is Hans Peter Dior. He found out recently that energy is matter. Matter is energy. E is equal to M, which he calls as a duality, no duality. But I'll quote him in his article. Matter is not made out of matter, which you can get in the in the internet. You go to Google and say matter is not made out of matter. And the author's name is Hans. H A N S P E T E R Dior is D U W R, and you get the article where he says, "I have a little child playing on the on the pe playing with the pebbles on the beach, when the vast ocean of wisdom 
Indian wisdom is in front of me. I call my discovery as a duality. But the Indian sages call it as Advaita, Tat, Sat, this and that, the two faces of the same coin. And he, he is a German, doesn't even know English properly, but he quotes Sanskrit so beautifully, which made me so humble to share a days with him in, in uh, San Diego we had this <coughs> meeting. And he was, he was quoting this shloka from the Upanishads through the Bhagavad Gita, which describes quantum physics. Vahir Antas Chabutana. It is inside and outside of a charam, acharame vacham. You all look very solid, but there's nothing solid about you. You are a bundle of jumping leptocons. And he said, this is what is called a Maya. This is what Shankara called as Maya, which he calls in German as a Vartlakait. Vartlakait in German means a drama. This whole world is a drama. There's nothing, there's nothing tangible in this world. And there is nothing called matter in this world. There's only haps, happening. Time stands still. The time was when my grandmother was there, the same time at this time. What changes the movement, happenings, he calls us haps. And ultimately he says, <coughs> Sukshma Vate Tamitneam. Whatever is it is, it is so subtle that no vidyana, no science, no scope, telescope, endoscope, microscope can find it. It requires a mindoscope which has not been invented by science. And he says, Durastam, but if you don't know, it's, you don't know. Aniketa Chata. When you know, it's very close, it's inside you. And that is quantum physics, the particles, the leptons, you call them anything you like. And because, you know, quantum physicists can pull out mat this particles like the magician pulls out pigeons from its hat. So it's, it's every day you have something. Suddenly they say, we have found the ultimate truth. The CERN has said, we have got the whole song. Actually, they have not got it. But they have got to keep saying that because science now depends on grants. Grants depend on publication. Publication depends on fraud. <laughs> I was telling my friend when he picked me up, I was saying we were talking about a patient with cancer. And we have cancer, big cancer in industry in this world, in the Western, Western uh, medicine, which uh, unfortunately I also belong to. I'm ashamed to say that, but then, you know, we have become a big menace to society. I, the doctors went on strike in different countries at different times. In Bogota, in Colombia, 25 years ago, Saskatchewan in Canada, Los Angeles County, uh, recently in Israel, and in Dublin some time ago. And do you know what happened? The audit shows that each time the doctors went on strike, death rate fell precipitously down. <laughs> <laughs> and disability almost disappeared. So much so in Israel recently. Thank you very much. So, so thoughtful. So good. So this is called yoga. This is yoga. I'm coming to that. That's called yoga. And yoga is not kusti. Astiram sukham asanam. Asana is only for sukha, but of course there are certain enjoyments in asana also. When you stretch yourself, you release a lot of endorphins. So pain relieving, relieving factors come out of your muscles. That's besides the point. Coming to yoga is this. And that is you becoming a good human being is called yoga. It's a good interlude. He just brought the water at the right time. Ultimately, all of you young child here, you have come here to become good human beings. To become human. You know, a lot of people ask me, are you a rotarian, are you a lion? I said, no, I am trying to be a human being, which I have not become yet. <laughs> but after I become a human being, then I think of becoming a lion or a tiger or whatever, an animal. But so, it's human and humane to be nice. Looking at all of you this morning and sitting here for nearly two hours now, uh, no, one and a half hours to be precise, I have now a feeling that God still has hope on mankind. Because when you do the monkeying tricks that our leaders, our politicians, our, in the whole society does, I have felt that God either has gone on a long leap, you know, he has gone on a sabbatical, or doesn't exist. But looking at you, little thing, this little thing is, is very, very great. Congratulations, God bless you. She is everything. That's the potential that comes out of you. Because you keep doing it, it comes out. And it was actually uh, Thomas Alva Edison who said, <coughs> if you don't think, you don't exist. If you think and you can think of some possibility, you can climb the Himalayan mountain. If you think you can't get up from bed, you can't get up from bed. In short, human body is immaterial. There's no matter it. Human body is immaterial, dash, spiritual and mental. And what is spiritual? A lot of you think spirituality is religion. No, there is nothing to do with religion at all. Spirituality originally comes from breath. 
spirits, not spirit. Spirits, you know, but they are. <laughs> they are sold in the wine shop. Spirit comes from the word spirus. Spirus in Latin means breath. So it's prana. What we call prana, that's the spirit. And prana, I am. You know, I was so happy to see here something original, something good that they're doing because I have lectured in several so-called American quote-unquote yoga schools. Each one, say BM Yoga School, BM, BM Yoga or something like that. So, you know, you have a yoga and then charge Hatha Yoga, Hot Yoga, Cold Yoga. In the, in the plane I had a chap who said, oh, Hatha Yoga, Hot Yoga. I said, what's Hot Yoga? He says, if you heat the room and then do yoga, you sweat. All these misconceptions about yoga, because that's not yoga at all. And a lot of people do yoga. In the morning they sit and say, Om, Om, for about half an hour. And 23 and a half hours, they think how to harm others. <laughs> this is where the whole problem is. Ayurveda says, do you know what happens? Krodha, Shoka, Bhaya, Ayasa, Viruddhana Bhojana, Taponala. Only do tapas, don't do any exercise. Katva, Aam, Lakshara, Lavana, Tikshno, Shtati, Rakta, Vitta, Prakope. All diseases come because of mind. Anger, jealousy. Now modern medicine has realized, we have realized now, the cause for heart attack is not cholesterol, weight and body weight and tummy and buttock and things like that. No, no, nothing else. It's your mind. Because your body is your mind. Human mind or human body is human mind in illusion. You think it is a body, but there isn't any body, it's all the mind. T e is equal to M. And so what happens? When once you become tranquil, when once you become human, you become a yogi. This boy brought this beautiful water, life-sustaining water, and he has become a yogi. <laughs> so, thinking, I want all of you to think. And I want you kids, each one, reach one. So that you go home, if you're 25 years, and you go to school, touch another person and say, look, there's something good in life. There's something nice. Something nice happening. You spread, this is a word of mouth. <coughs> You don't have to have uh, television interview, I mean advertisement, etc. Because advertisement, you know, is not to tell you about the, the product. Uh, how many of you have read that book called Affluent Society by our friend uh, John Galbraith, who was the ambassador of this country in India? In 1956, he wrote a beautiful book called Affluent Society, where there's a sentence about how we advertise. He says, advertisement is not to tell about the product, it's to make the person want to buy it when he doesn't need it. It's called advertisement. You know, we say you go to the shopping, uh, this is three shirts for one price. Actually, it's three size shirts price, is one shirt's price they have. So you think three I get, you don't need three. You get three. This is because you don't have the Indian ethos, where my grandmother said, don't stretch your feet beyond your mat. And whole country, Western countries, live on IOU economy. IOU. You have a beautiful car, you have a fantastic house, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the, the mortgage company and so many people. And then you know you have a card, wife has a card, and card you can buy anything under the sun. And when the bill comes, both of you get so frustrated. If you don't, if you're not a yogi and you don't know how to have you know, tranquility in your mind, you either commit suicide. You know, funny things happen. I have a I have a friend of mine who is actually a student, who is a leading neurosurgeon in one of the cities here. He had only two kids. And what do you do for the kids? You spoil them in the morning. You must get first try. That first rank. What is first rank in the class? What is first rank in the class, young lady? What is first rank in the class? It is mediocrity. You are competing with others. So you are better than others, that's all. But excellence is, you must attain excellence. You know what is excellence? Compete with yourself. What this girl said, I will do it next week. You are doing Arangetra next week. Next Three weeks. So that's called excellence. I want to be better. Actually a very interesting experiment was done by a teacher in the medical school in the Caribbean. He was a professor in the Wisconsin Medical School. Then he went over there because he got a lot more money. But he found all kinds of students that good, bad, and the indifferent. And some of them were so bad that they couldn't understand and come up. But then if he did this first rank business, they will all fail. So what he did was he took the best so-called the toppers and told them, each one of you will have to teach two of these and see that they pass, then you will get the pass. <laughs> and would you believe at the end of the class, everybody passed and those boys when they were brought to Wisconsin Medical School were better than the regular Wisconsin Medical School boys. 
That's because if you, if you really want to change somebody, you can do that. And I think this uh, husband and wife and their friends, they're doing a wonderful job. Transforming society. Nothing, nothing can be better than that. Where did I go? I am supposed to talk about yoga and then <laughs> Adi will tell me what I want Rabbi Sherry talking. Why, why did we call you at all? Because I still remember you know, when somebody calls you and you have to, you don't follow their dictum, then they, they feel so bad about it. They, they feel let down. But anyway, friends, I was given 40 minutes. So I thought I have 40 minutes and I'll talk. 45 minutes to be precise. I'll talk. But after that, if you have any questions, I don't guarantee you an answer. Certain things will show you what we have been doing for the last about 45 or 40 minutes, 8 years. When I first started as a doctor, conventionally I was a good student, blah, blah, and all. He read it. Don't believe all that. What he read is that, that's not important. But then I, first day, not first day actually, after about two, three months, when one day, my juniors called me at night about two o'clock and said, sir, a man is brought dead. He's about 34 years. And he's brought dead. And um, you know, we have Try, try for our tubes in the orifices. If we do that, you know, if you come to the hospital, every every orifice which where nature intends things to come out, you put things in. That's where we try to kill people. Anyway, they, they had done that because a young wife who was married about one year earlier was uh, literally rolling on the floor and uh, refusing to get cut. So I went there and I thought I know everything, you know, this blah 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 degrees, this and that. But she asked me one question as I entered the room. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning, I didn't have my shoe, I had my chappals and she held my ankle like that, tight. And said, why did my husband die, doctor? Did you get the question? Why did my husband die, doctor? Then I realized, you bloody fool, you don't have an answer. <laughs> How did my husband die, doctor? I would have given her a big harangue of what I wrote in the examination. Blah, 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 it's because of this, that, the heart rate blocked, the heart rate stopped, etc., etc. She said, why did my husband die, doctor? I have no answer. Anyway, I gave her some wrong answer to convince her. She went home, took the body, they burnt the body. But, I said, you bloody fool, all that you learned so far is of no consequence. You have to find out the real answer to questions. And I was reminded of what Goethe, Goethe is one of the greatest thinkers in Germany. And Goethe said, I now know philosophy, physiology, jurisprudence, theology, even alas, jurisprudence. From end to end with labor scheme. But here I stand, oh fool, with all my lore, no wiser than before. On my journey to find out why her husband died <coughs> or why does one get disease? How does one get disease? We have all kinds of rubbish. All of which is, which is not, not correct. But why does one get disease? I don't know. Then I realized positive <coughs> sciences will never be able to answer the question why. Positive science at best will answer the questions how or how much. Ratio re is not there for reason why. And you will never know why. As a cardiologist I can tell you how does the heart contract. But if you ask me why does the heart contract, I wouldn't know. I know as a doctor how does the muscle contract. But I wouldn't know why does the muscle contract. Then you go into things like the esoteric things. That's called teleology. In teleology, you get into philosophy. What is philosophy? Phil, Sophia. Phil is love, Sophia is wisdom. You go after wisdom, not knowledge. In science, in school, you go after knowledge. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Did you know anybody? What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? No, no. I, I want... Yeah, you are very, very bright. Oh. Knowledge is knowing information while wisdom. That is between science and technology. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge dwells in heads replete with thoughts of other men. I have read this, I have read that, I have heard that, I have talked this. But wisdom dwells in heads attentive to the arrow. Knowledge is so proud because it knows so much. Wisdom is so humble because it knows no more. So knowledge and wisdom, far from being one, have nothing in common at all. So I want you to be wise rather than knowledgeable. I want you to be thinking rather than knowledgeable. And that's where yoga helps. Yoga, a lot of people say, oh, you're joining the Atman with the Paramatman, etc., etc. Would, would you believe that our friend Patanjali was an agnostic? He didn't believe in God. As a matter of fact, Vedas didn't have God at all. Vedas didn't have temple at all. But 
they had a common thing. What is what is real yoga? Chitta, Vritti, Nirodha Yoga. You know Chitta? What is Chitta? Mind. What is mind? Never mind. And what is matter? No matter. In Ayurveda, the human mind, which I have been telling you is human body, human mind is universal mind, and you and I are the same. There is no difference between you and me. You are a part of me, I am a part of you, because leptocots in you join me, in you they come to me, even from me you go to you, and so we are one. Supposing if I hurt you, I am hurting a limb of my own. When once we become so selfish, they are saying that this is my heart, this is my wife, this is my husband, this is my home, this is my money, this is my pen, <coughs> then you are lost. Everything is we. You know the difference between I and we? When once you forget the word I, and become we, you become a you. That's all the difference. I'll give you the very simple thing. I is the beginning of illness. We is the beginning of wellness. That's all the difference. <laughs> so if you want to be well, leave your I. Now, the mind has a five levels. A baby, a newborn baby, as it's growing, has a mind, which is like a dark room with a window. And you sit in the dark room and look out of the window. Anything comes out of the window, you smile. Have you seen a child? Young child, it smiles 500 to 1000 times a day. How many times did you smile yesterday? <laughs> you would be surprised. If you took it that child, when the child breathes in, the heart goes fast. When the child breathes out, the heart goes slow. This is called heart rate variability. I'll show you some of the experiments that we have been doing for the last 35 years. Now, when you grow older, and lose that mind, manas, it's called manas, manas in Sanskrit. And then you start less smiling because you hate the whole world. <laughs> For some reason or the other you have something against someone else. So then your heart rate does not change. Instead of, and then slow, it becomes regular, 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 regular. On the day it is absolutely regular, you are dead. <laughs> so what we have been trying to do for the last 45 odd years is to see if we can get you from that dying stage back to the child stage for which we have to change your mind now I will tell you what happens to this child when you send it to the school the child is so good God like it is almost God incarnate you go to school and say 2 plus 2 is 4 who told you that in quantum physics 2 plus 2 can be 5 also you know, because there is what's called the delta error, theta error, you don't know what happens. That's why you send somebody to the moon, <coughs> it goes to the Mars and comes back and dead. <laughs> and then we say, oh, this happened, that happened, foam came off, nothing came off. Your calculation went wrong. That's all what happens. Because there is no, there is what's called uncertainty. In this world, there is nothing called certainty. Whole world is uncertain. That's why I said, there is no tomorrow. I jokingly tell my patients, if you forget two days in 365 days, you will be happy the remaining 363 days. What are those two days? Tomorrow and yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Live in today. That's why it's called a present. It's given to you as a present. Past is dead, gone. Tomorrow is not gone. So don't predict the future. No science under the sun can predict the future because there is no future in quantum physics. Tomorrow has not come. Weather predictions, you see a lot of things. Tomorrow there will be rain in San Francisco. No, it will not rain. <laughs> and the man who found out how to predict weather is based on the linear calculation. We do everything linearly. You know, we say, go, go to a doctor, then he'll take your ECG and say, oh, it's regular, sinus rhythm. If it's truly regular sinus rhythm, you're dead. You're not alive at all. Somebody says, your blood pressure is normal. What's blood pressure? It go, it's like this. Blood pressure keeps doing this. If it does this, you're dead. This, and if he catches it here, he calls it high. He catches it here, counts it low, and he never catches it here. And by the time he catches, tries to catch it, it has gone up some so <laughs> this is This is what we don't realize. Blood sugar, for example. We, I did a study some years ago. We took 10 finger pricks with half a minute difference. Analyzed 10 different readings. You are very healthy. 10 fingers taken, all, almost identical reading. You are either a diabetic, a bad diabetic, or you are going to be a diabetic. Similarly, if your blood pressure, every time is the same, you go to the doctor and check up. You know, that's what's called the check up, the, the green, biggest curse on mankind. Check up. Never see a doctor when you're well. <laughs> How do you know you're well? 
समदातु समाग्निस्च समदोष है मलक्रिय प्रसन्न आत्मा इंद्रिय माना है वस्ते इक्के भी नहीं you just you shit well you eat well you piss well you drink well you sleep well and if you don't hate nobody you are healthy and what is health not absence of disease each one of us sitting here has not one disease many diseases as we define disease because we define disease to make money this is called disease mongering we add more and more and more and more i tell you one joke when i was a student in medical school we were taught 160 systolic and 110 diastolic is okay but beyond that you should be careful and we try to do this like that after i became a physician and cardiologist it came to 140 by 90 then i wrote to the doctor how did you bring it down suddenly they said oh we have evidence what evidence i asked what is the evidence we call it as evidence based medicine i wrote an article 45 years ago evidence burden medicine <laughs> we only make matters worse we have no evidence and absence of evidence is not evidence of absence remember that because you can't touch god doesn't mean no god doesn't exist i don't know whether god exists or not but if there is no proof that he doesn't exist so to say god doesn't exist is as unscientific as to say god exists there's there's an american poet is called christian shield it is so beautiful thing who has seen the wind who has seen the wind neither you nor i but when the trees bend and dance wind is passing by who has seen god neither you nor i but when you have any trouble you feel god <laughs> who has seen electron neither you nor i but we all believe in electron because some has called einstein said electron <laughs> <laughs> she so happy <laughs> you must be, see these are all fed to us einstein is a great brain it must be kept in the preservative in this <coughs> einstein is it but you don't know what einstein is we are einstein is a clerk in the patent office in perth his wife was a physicist so called physicist she has passed bsc msc and she was good in blagets so they took lot of articles published by so many people fitzgerald in 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 ireland who is a mathematician poincare in france who is a mathematician and lawrence in germany who was a physicist so they had published by 1899 various things about the the various uh, theories of relativity etc you know the theory of relativity right if you sat on a hot plate for a fraction of a second looks like an year if a cute young beautiful girl sits on your lap for one year it looks like one second that's called the theory of relativity anyway coming back to <laughs> coming back to e is equal to mc squared and the general theory of relativity etc etc and the newton's theory of deterministic predictability and the the rays the star light bending when it comes to the sun etc etc all theory what is theory they sit and write and you think i said is great whatever she said is right but science is not a truth remember that science is change so newton's theory of relativity determinist predicate went down with einstein theory of relativity with quantum mechanics which einstein did not agree with <coughs> till he died and everything is said now what happens now 16 people try to find out if what einstein said and newton said is right how to do that on a full solar eclipse day with pitch dark you go to a place in brazil or in africa where there is a total eclipse which can be seen take your telescope and look at the thing and see how the light come and all the 16 said both newton and einstein were wrong but nobody published that the negative things never get published and everybody was confused so there was a british physicist who einstein had helped to get the nobel prize arthur stanley eddington So I think and said, I'm going to take the photographs myself. So next is solar eclipse, which happens once in a blue moon, and he went to Brazil and took some photos. While taking the photos, the cloud came. So nothing is seen in his photos, but he came back and said, Einstein was right, Newton was wrong. For one thing, he is Newton is his own uh, local man. You hate your own people. You, know, you go you, in India if you go, everybody hates you. But when you come out, only people say, "Okay, he is not a bad ass. He is a good ass." As in India, you are a bad ass. So he said, "Einstein was right, and the others are wrong." This is how science works. And when you laughed, I was so uh, uh, reminded of a beautiful book, right now. It's called the New Paradigm. The book's name is New Paradigm, written by a distinguished <coughs> professor of chemistry at A&M University in, in Texas, and his name is John Bockris. John O M Bockris, and you read that. He was Einstein's colleague in Princeton, so he writes about Einstein the man, and that you must read. And how, when his wife died, the fourth wife died, 
this man came to the office on time because he was a stickler for time. The only thing he was strict about was time, nothing else. And his hair and all, he doesn't uh, now, you know, after that, he became a sort of a star. You, know? you shouldn't comb your hair when you become a star. <laughs> if you look at Einstein's pictures when he was 26 years old in 1905, he's a very nice dark hair, nicely combed with a small mustache and all. He was a human being then. When he became a star, then hair all went down and you, you see that That's picture. Fun. So don't believe all these things. They sell these things to, I always say, Bakra for you. That's a, 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 a Indian word I used in English. They, they really, they really Bakra for us. They take us to a This is You know what a Bakra is? All of you know what a Bakra is. So bakra Fai is making you a Bakra. English has no father, mother, it's a, it's a bastard. English has no, no script. English has no vocabulary, nothing. So English became, English now. There's English, 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 English and all. In Karnada, in Karnataka we speak pretty pretty English. You go to Punjab, they say, AKI Satation, Railway Satation. You go to UP, they say Railway East Station. So a Punjabi went to the AK you look yeah, yeah. Satation go East Station both day, East King goes in sucking look there. So this is Bakrafa is a very good word. It will be in the Oxford dictionary next time. Coming back to the mind. The child sits there, you send the child to the school, it gets buddhi. That's the level called buddhi. What is buddhi? What you are told. You are a bright student, which is your buddhi. And that's what... You Have you heard of a man called Alexis Carroll? A Nobel laureate, a doctor, a surgeon, who taught us how to transplant the vessels, stitch a vessel. He wrote a book called Man the Unknown. He was a rascal, he was a, he's a Jew, Nazi. So he said all the people who are mentally not all right, they must be all gassed because their economic is not viable. But that's his other side of the coin. But this book he has written, so beautiful book called Man the Unknown, where he says, every newborn child is a genius, only to be converted an idiot in school. <laughs> so you become a buddhi in school. Now when once you buddhi, you are told that is BM grade. That is Anil. Now the child now knows, it doesn't smile at everybody. Or it knows it's smiling at BMA. Or it's smiling at Ani. That's all the difference between chit, Buddhi and Manas. Manas smiles at everybody. Buddhi may not smile at everybody. Because if you tell in the school that BMA is a rascal, that child will not smile at BMA. <laughs> Did you understand that? Okay. Then you get to know a lot of things. Your Buddhi expands. Then you see, I, I am, I am somebody. Aham, Aham comes. So the Aham comes at a level. There's the next level of the mind which is called Chitta where the aham comes. There it says, I don't like BMA day. See, that's the way the problem starts. Problem starts at the chitta level. For manas there was no problem. For buddhi also there was not problem, but there little problem. But when you come to chitta, your problem. I don't like BMA day. And that hurts me. Hatred. I have written a nice article, you can read nice, I shouldn't say nice. <laughs> it's called grudgeitis. You have heard about say, spondylitis, appendicitis, <laughs> it's called grudgeitis. Very nice article. So anyway, you don't like. Now, chitta, you get all the things. Vritti, undulations, desire. That's why in yoga, you forgot what's called pratyahara. Have you heard of pratyahara? Yeah, Om, tell me what is pratyahara. Uh, withdrawal from your senses. Sorry? Withdrawal from your senses. Withdrawal from your senses. Withdrawal from your senses. Withdrawal from your senses. Can you really do that? Completely. Then you become nonsensical. <laughs> Very interesting. Now I, let's be, let me say, this girl has got a diamond earring. So beautiful. So beautiful. I must enjoy that. Sorry, ma? You want brownie points? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, he is a yogi. He is a yogi. <laughs> well, come back to this. Now, the manas, Pratyahara is, I like that diamond, but I must enjoy it in her ear as much as it is in my ear. <laughs> I, you have to enjoy every good thing. Thing of beauty is joy forever. But there should not be no difference between that being in her ear or in my ear. That is called Pratyah. You know, I love something, but I am as happy that it is with you as it is with me. In short, very difficult to get to the land level. Supposing, let us say, Abdul Kalam becomes the president of India. 
I must be as happy because it should be make you as happy as you have become the president of India. That's called real pratyaha. A lot of people have a lot of misunderstandings. There's uh, this thing called uh, brahmacharya. Everybody thinks that you should have a wife, you should you know, become a sannyasi. No, no, no. Brahmacharya is authenticity. You walk your talk. No, no. Very rarely we really walk our talk. Walking your talk is what's called brahmacharya. Now come back to this. In the in the chitta level, you have a lot of vritti, desire, greed, anger, pride. So Patanjali said, at that level you require something which puts a nirod. You know, not the government nirod, at least. <laughs> this nirodaha is what is called chitta vritti nirodaha yoga. So you become a yogi when you become tranquil, when you become sthita prajna, and that is yoga. And that can be achieved by hundreds of things. Bhakti Yoga. Krishna told Arjuna, you can do it. Bhakti Yoga. See, that's a beautiful thing. All of Mahabharata, one of my friends was so beautifully, you see Mahabharata that somebody is 10, 4 hours a day and for one month or three months you go on seeing. Don't have to do that. It simply says, very interesting, two words. Kurukshetre, Dharmakshetre. Dharmakshetre, Purukshetre. Now, Sandhi Vigas, divide the Dharmakshetre. Kuru Kshetra, rewrite it. Kshetre, Kshetre, Dharma Guru. In every walk of life, whether you're an engineer, father, mother, son, nephew, husband, wife, Kshetre, Kshetre, Dharma Guru. You do your Dharma. Dharma is an obligation. Dharma is not a religion. Dharma is your obligation to society. So if you did that, you become a yogi. So you don't have to do Kusti, you don't have to do Pranayama, you don't have to do. Actually, Krishna says, Arjuna, that if you become a yogi, you breathe like Pranayama. Have you seen an angry man breathing? I see. <laughs> but have you seen a yogi breathing? The difference between pranayama, yogi, and the, 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 the tortoise and the dog. Have you seen a dog? It, if it runs, it <laughs> because the dog doesn't have sweat glands, so it can't take his heat out here. It has to take his heat out here. So sweat has to come, the water has to come from the mouth, and it has to breathe fast. But it doesn't live beyond 15, 20 years. Look at the tortoise, large, you know, archipelago which uh, our friend uh, Darwin saw. They are still alive. When they breathe once or twice a minute, once a minute. So they have a lot of reserve breath. And that's how pranayama is automatically coming if you are a good human being. The minute you become a good human being, you get pranayama. I always tell people who are agitated. One day we had a problem with the flight. Flight, to, we had to go to Bombay, but it landed in Hyderabad. The Bombay was flooded. So, people are so angry, fighting with those girls, saying that, I want to be there. You know who I am? I'm the chairman of a bank. I have to be there for the meeting. How do you do that? She says, sir, we have not done anything, sir. Nature has done. The Bombay the airstrip is underwater. The plane can't land there. You tell, send me to Bombay. I'm the chairman of a bank. So, he was angry, red, and that girl was sweeping. So, I just went to him and said, Sardarji, I too want to go to Bombay. But even I can't go to Bombay. So you are a big man, you are the chairman of the bank. All that you do is pick up your phone, bring up your people and there. say that, you know, I couldn't land in Bombay, so can I postpone that meeting? And, yes, I could do that, I suppose. And then he started breathing slowly. <laughs> and I told him, you call your people here. Hyderabad, you've got a lot of people. So go and have some lunch, it's already one o'clock. And he went. And then I told this girl, little girl, I'm sorry, everybody is, you can't help it. But did you eat anything? It was 2.30 by then. She cried, like, he cried, someone else, she cried, and because you know, they become so emotional, she cried and said, sir, nobody ever asked me this question, sir, I have been here from 6 o'clock in the morning, 22 planes have landed here, and we have hardly no sandwich also here, and all the planes, because Bombay can be landed, Hyderabad is the nearest, and they have only enough petrol to come to aviation will come to Hyderabad. And this, 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 you must be human, is it? So that is the stage you get Chitta, Vritti, Nirodha, Yoga. But even without Yoga you can have. There's what's called Viveka. Viveka Chudamani. You know what Viveka says? Okay, you don't like VMI, then let him go to dog. What, what are you worried about? Why do you agitate yourself? VMI, you don't like. Let him go to dogs. What are you worried about? That level of mind is okay. That's called Purusha. So you come to the Purusha level, you are still okay, but you are not a yogi. You know, Purusha, Shreshta, Ishwara. You come to the next level of the mind called Ishwara. 
Ishwara is not God inside the temple. Ishwara, one who is one with the surrounding. How do you do that? You have to go out to do something. You don't like PM Day, but it's about 11 o'clock now. Whether it has a breakfast or not, you don't know. He is from India, he is roaming about in Milpitas. So you go out and say, Mr. PM Day, please come in. Sit down. We have a cup of tea in my house. And that is the level you reach if you become a true yogi. Did you get that? That's what Chitta Prasthi Nirodha Yoga means. Young lady, did you get that? Yes. Good. Fine. Yes. You know, yoga is just your, your uh, Qigong is only yoga in motion. You do that in a different way. Because all this, you know, wisdoms move from generation to generation, civilization to civilization, and they change. For acupressure, we had in Vermology in Siddha, we have got what's called acupressure. And that will become acupuncture. Actually, Varma Siddha is a very great system of medicine in India, southern India. And we have that Varma points, you know, points where you massage them and you get a lot of uh, benefits out of them. So, this, all these wisdoms to be collectively, one should not hate another. Modern medicine is bad, I know, I am a modern medicine man. But modern medicine also is needed. You can't throw it out because the water is bad, you can't throw the baby and the bathtub. Because if, supposing I fall under a car in Hilpitas Road, then I can't say I do yoga and pranayama and om and all, I'll be alright. No, I require some <laughs> So for emergencies, we require modern medicine. But what is the emergency? Only 2% of the sick population are given it. But for the 98% of the sick population, most of them are what are called minor illness syndromes. They've got a limited time. After two days, you'll be all right. But you have patience and somebody to reassure you. That's exactly what modern medicine also started as. Hippocrates wrote, I quote, Cure rarely, comma. Comfort mostly, comma. But console always, full stop. But that is exactly what we don't do. A good doctor should be a good human being. And all of you kids, if you want to go to medical school, learn yoga now and you become a human being. Then you don't have to be, you know, this degree, this book, you bullshit, nothing is necessary because all that has changed. What is important is a good human being. A recent study in Oxford showed, this was a very extensive study, Oxford, Cambridge, Munich, Hamburg, four universities collectively, monitored from Oxford, did this study where it showed pain patients they took, let's say cancer pain, first pain, what's the treatment we have? Morphia. Morphia is a very good painkiller. So they were running a trip of morphia to a cancer patient, but the doctor told the patient, this is not morphia, this is a new vitamin we have found out for cancer, your pain will not be relieved, but you will get benefit out of it. Would you believe nobody got pain relief? And what was running here? Most powerful painkiller under the sun. Now you know you should not take painkillers, there is a side effect. Don't take any painkiller at any time, painkillers kill. <laughs> I have an article in the British Medical Journal, read that on the internet. Pills, thrill, comma, but could kill, full stop. Actually, painkillers produce more heart attacks than cholesterol, blood pressure or diabetes. You can take one tablet or Tylenol today and in the next five years, if you get a heart attack due to that, nobody knows. That's why, why did my husband get a heart attack, doctor? Period. Did you get the point? Now come back to yoga again. You become tranquil, you become a yoga. Now if you did that, then you become a transformed human being. Lot of people have an idea, I do yoga every day doctor, I don't get any benefit. You see years ago, about 15 years ago, I was lecturing in Texas and there's a big hypertension man there called Norman, Norman Kaplan. So Kaplan was talking about a drug, I was talking about no drug treatment for hypertension. And I was a long fellow from a village, Kaplan is a big name here. You know, Kaplan is on the, you know, big name in America. So, I was talking about yoga and I was showing my data as to how yoga can be. So, Kaplan said, oh, no, no, you know what Professor Igde says, doesn't help here. Maybe in India it does, it doesn't help here and blah, 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 blah. And everybody claps. And when I talk, nobody claps. But anyway, now he was selling a particular drug. A particular drug, I won't tell you which drug it is. So, I went back, what to do? Nobody claps. Yeah, none of you were there. So, next year I was here. I was in uh, I was in uh, the Northern Colorado University where I am a visiting professor. And I was in the hotel room. Got up in the morning. The radio was very Alpha blockers used for hypertension have been found to be very dangerous, and they have produced 37% more deaths due to heart failure. 
It's an alpha blockers are being banned and all Americans, there are about a million Americans on alpha blockers, they are told to go to their doctor today and ask for a change in the tablet, blah, blah, blah. So I called uh, Norman and said, Norman, did you know what happened to the tablet that you are selling in Dubai with me? Yes. I think now my also idea go with, goes with your ideas. <laughs> but nobody to clap there. I was in my hotel room, he was in his house. This is the problem in the world. So people go and clap trap. There's a medical clap trap. And that's why you all get buckrapai. <laughs> See, I was telling my friend who picked me up, he's uh, my friend from India. I was telling him, 89%, mark my words, 89% of cancer research has been now found to be fraud. Now, if I told you that you are getting to a plane, I say 89% of the time this plane will fall from the sky. Will you get into that plane? <laughs> but because of the medical clap trap, if the doctor says you have cancer, you run to him, run to that same hospital. This is, the, this is the unfortunate part. And if you told them you become a yogi, tranquility, anyone must. You can you stop death? No. Irish couplet: I drink when I am thirsty. I eat when I am hungry. If heavens don't fall down, I'll live, certainly live till I die. <laughs> Lot of my patients are worried about death. I tell them, why are you worried about death? Everybody has to die. Someday, it's all a cue. The biggest risk factor for death is being born. <laughs> <laughs> the only risk factor. If you don't want to die, don't get born. <laughs> Having been born, then say I don't want to die, impossible. <laughs> so, I tell them, die in your soul. But you are a very good man. You have been doing so many good things to society. God will give an account and you will certainly go to heaven. That's where he wanted to go. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Ultimately, Moksha you want to go. So you are happy. So good that you die. Supposing God's account keeper, the, the actuary, uh, the accountant, has not passed his uh, CPA problem. <laughs> so he keeps a wrong account and you go to hell. So what? So many of your friends are there. <laughs> What do we do? We say, oh my god, no, got pain there, oh, this is cancer, the report says it's cancer, finished. And you only six months live, write a bill quickly, and that fellow dies within six months. Not cancer doesn't kill him, mind kills him. <laughs> we were doing some work on voodoo therapy in Africa, you know, when I was uh, with my professor, uh, Nobel laureate. What, what happens in African tribes is there is no court. Court you don't get justice, but there is no court. There is a chief. So if you do something wrong, like you rape somebody in Delhi street, you are taken to the chief. And the chief is convinced that you are raped, the chief will show a bone at you, old human bone. From that time onwards, you are not supposed to be talked to even by society people. Your own people, family and friends should talk to you. But you are not thrown out, you are kept in a house outside the village. And food is supplied to you, everything is supplied. But neither, none of these people live beyond one week. They all die within one week. And people thought it's because the bone is shown at you. That's called voodoo, V O O D O O. No, we did a study. We frustrated pigs. We got the pig in the lab, put it in the cage, and the pig was very hungry. So, with nice food is in front, and the pig comes to eat, it gets a direct shock. But it's hungry, again comes, it gets a shock. Ten times it gets a shock, it says, Oh, I don't want to eat, forget about it. And it goes back to the back of the cage, lies down. Frustrated pig, depressed pig, and we can kill that pig with one jewel current. One jewel current, the pig is dead. Normal pig requires hundred jewels current. That's why frustrated people die very fast. No, don't get frustrated. That's why <laughs> you know, frustration is because you are not a yogi. You have a demand. That I must be the president of the United States of America. But unfortunately, Obama became. <laughs> So you become so uh, you know, frustrated that you don't want to do nothing, you get immediately a common cold. People say, oh, cold you get, it's because of the virus. That virus is with you all the time, it's your friend. But the day you get frustrated, your, your immune guard is gone and you get cold. And we all say, oh, germs are bad. We don't allow, you know, we wash our uh, children ten times and uh, we, we, you know. No, nothing is needed. Germs are us. No, germs are not different, we are also germs. In the human genome, there are only 25,000 human genes, but two and a half trillion germ genes. So you are a child of a germ. 
So we frighten people, oh, did your father have a heart attack? Then you will have a heart attack. You will have a heart attack. <laughs> Actually, your father had a heart attack. Your chance of getting a heart attack is for 0 0.1 million zeros one percent. Because only 25% of the genes are your father's. Two and a half trillion genes are from germs. All kinds of germs which you acquired when you are coming out through the birth canal. That's why if you take the child from here, the child will not have an immune system at all. Immune system is germs. And between this mouth and this hole at the bottom, you have 10 to the power 13 germs. And if those germs are destroyed by your antibiotics, this, that, the immune system goes down. Today we know that the immune system is so bad in some of the people with the infections in the intensive care unit, no drug will help them. What is needed is shit from another patient, another person. <laughs> Good shit from a decent person. You take it out, about 250 cc, emulsified, and put it through the tube, and in four hours time the patient goes home. Because if you have enough germs in the gut, you are okay. So germs are us. <laughs> opening your eyes wide. <laughs> Don't you worry. You watch your child. You leave the child on the floor. It will crawl and crawl and crawl and go to the corner, pick up the dust and eat it. That is a God-given vaccination. The child is hardwired to pick up dust. Don't stop the child from picking up dust. The more dust the child eats, the better. <laughs> I'm not joking. You know, when we were all children in India, we used to get a lot of roundworms in our shit. <laughs> Balls of them. Did you get that? Yes. Now science says, if you didn't have roundworms in your gut, your immune system is very weak. That's why in America now they sell you over of roundworms, over of hookworms in sashes for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> now come back. What does Ayurveda say? Hita, mita, ahara, sevi. Eat in moderation what you like. Don't say this is cholesterol, that is this, this is what you like. No, no. Eat what you like, but in moderation. Everything in moderation. Samikshakari, work very hard. Nobody has died working. You can work 24 hours a day, provided. There's a provided. You love your work. If you love your work, you can work incessantly. But if you hate your work, one hour's work will kill you. That's called distress. Not stress, but distress. Samikshakari. Data. Be a data. Given. I saw a lot of you giving today. I was so happy. I was reminded of Isha Parishad. Tena, Tyak Tena, Bunjita. Enjoy it, rejoice in giving. Tena, Tyak Tena, Bunjita, Mahagradam, Kasyasvidam. Don't have average greed and all. So it says, Data, Data. Samaha, treat everyone equal. You know, when you see your boss, you say, Sir. And you see your servant, Hey! You <laughs> <laughs> will get quickly diseased. Lot of girls, when I was the dean of the medical school for about a decade, a lot of these girls fall in love. Come and say, Sir, I like this boy, sir. I can't talk to my parents. So I tell her, don't ask me. I'll say, give you a test. Take him to a restaurant in the evening. A good restaurant. And then see how he behaves in the restaurant. When he goes to the restaurant, the restaurant owner comes. He says, sir, how are you, sir, this evening? Hello, sir. And then you go and sit in the table. There's some dirt there. They say, hey, come here. Clean it. Don't marry that boy. <laughs> He's not Samaha. He's Asamaha. So that's what the yoga should be. Samaha. Treat everyone as equal. Then it says, Satyapara. My friend was telling about Satyame Vajayate. Have you read that in our Satyame Vajayate? Actually, you have not read it correctly. It says, Asatyame Vajayate, na Satya. Anratame Vajayate, na Satya. Only falsehood must succeed, not truth. So, if you are a Satya, because there is no tension when you tell the truth. Supposing you tell an untruth, you have to remember that because next time you have to defend it. So there is tension, a lot of tension. You have to, ten times you tell a lie in a day, thousand times you must think about it. Tell the truth, nothing is So, Satyapar. Then it says, what does it say? Shamavan. You can say, I don't hurt nobody, but somebody will comment it to you on the time. One day I was, uh, I was invited to give an oration in Chennai on uh, now young ladies and young girls here. We teach us, you know, we go by the calendar, not by the clock. So we start on the 29th, 30th and go on to the 31st. So if I have heard, it's our duty today. You listen to me and I am supposed to talk to you. If any one of us has finished his or her duty before the other one has finished, if you raise a hand, I will be done. So tell me when it's rose, because I still remember my wife, of course, she's no more than us. She used to send a chit whenever I used to speak. It is written, kiss, K-I-S-S. -S. So one day I kept the chit down and the, the 
presiding officer saw that and said, what a nice wife you have got sex with. I said, no, she said, keep it short, stupid. <laughs> so, come back to this, what happened? Now, Satyapra. Then now, very interesting. Shamavan, Shamaraki people. Have you seen Jains? Any one of the Jains here? Oh, you have a Kshama for a week. Where one week they keep telling everyone, everyone they know, everyone they met, please excuse me if I have hurt you knowingly or unknowingly in the last one year. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Right, ma? Yes. That is called Kshamavan. Then it says, Aptopasevi Bhavet Aroti. If you treat everyone as your near and dear ones, health will be yours for the asking. I should never have me, you concept. It's mine, it's yours. That, see, because our body cells love one another so much. Suppose you get a heart attack, let us say. You are lucky not to be near a hospital. You are lucky not to be in the United States. You are in the forest. You get a heart attack. And you have not dead. Because 60% of the heart attack patients are dead before they know they were heart attack. Nobody can do nothing. The remaining 40%, you just lie down there in the forest. What does happen? So, you know what a heart attack is? A part of the heart is dead. Cells die. So first step is cell death. Did you get it? The neighboring cells, they say, oh my God, my brother is dead. So I must go there. They slip out and come and occupy the place. That's called cell slipping. Second stage. Today what happens? You live in apartments. You know apartment? <laughs> Keep people apart. <laughs> if your neighbor dies, after the smell comes only, you know he is. <laughs> it's not like that. So the brother has died, neighbor has died, this fellow will slip out and go. When this slips out, there is somebody holding that cell there. It's called, we call it in our Latin, collagen, which simply means somebody is holding it there. So this is called fibroblast, a collagen with mother of the blast. So mother says, where's my son gone? He's missing here. Normally when a son goes out of the house, mother doesn't know where he has gone. He has, might have gone for something. But here the mother knows, my son will never go for any bad thing. He has gone to help somebody. Paropakara, Tavidam, Shariram. So he has gone to help somebody. So the mother says, I'll also help. So she produces more fibers. That's called step three, fibroblastic proliferation. So you get a cell, replacement for a cell, slipped cell, and then fibrous tissue, you get a nice scar. Without anybody's help, you get a scar. And then the peripheral cells which can't slip, they say, we have to do something. It's our duty. So they become stronger. It's called hypertrophy. So four things happen. Cell death, cell slipping, fibroblastic proliferation, and hypertrophy. Now why does it happen? Because they all want to give, give. And that's the quality of a human cell. It wants to give to you, 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 everybody. What do we say? You, me. Then the cells get, what's wrong with this fellow? I love everybody, this fellow hates somebody. So I will hate him. So your own body cells hate your own body cells and you get a disease which has no treatment, worse than cancer, it's called autoimmune disease. And all these can be, you know, if yoga, you see, you, you hug everybody, you become universally compassionate. And that is called health. The new definition of health is, enthusiasm to work and enthusiasm to be compassionate. This is the new definition of health which we proposed in the IOM meeting on the 28th of February 2010 in Washington and IOM is the highest body in this country in Institute of Medicine which audits the medical world and this was proposed by Professor Rustum Rai was a founder for member of the, the IOM and now the American IOM has accepted the new definition of not absence of this, this is that, this is you know, physical, mental, psychological, spiritual, blah, 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 that you can't attain except after death. And they say, one scientist said, at the height of orgasm, which lasts for only a fraction of a second. Otherwise, you are not healthy at all. But here, no, you, are, you can be always healthy. Enthusiasm to work. You know the meaning of the word enthusiasm? What is the meaning of the word enthusiasm? It answer. It answer. What's the meaning of the word enthusiasm? Excitement, my God. Enthusiasm, enthusiasm, N, N in Latin means inside. Theos means God. God is sitting inside and provoking you to do that. That's what's called prachodayat. Om, Mur, Buha, Swaha. Ultimately you say what? Prachodayat. Give me prachodana. And that's called enthusiasm. N, Theos. N is in. Theos is God. And enthusiasm to work, work, work. Shamikshakari. See, yoga says Shamikshakari. And then? Enthusiasm to compassionate. Paropakara Artha Shari. Give yourself. Give, 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 give. And don't take, 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 take. And when you give, you are very happy. If I have given one rupee to somebody, even if I have ten rupees, I am very happy. Suppose somebody gives me ten rupees, I say, why the bloody hell did he give hundred rupees? If he gives hundred rupees, why did he give thousand rupees? So you are unhappy all the time. 
So friends, yoga is simple life itself. Yoga is becoming human and yoga is converting yourself into a good human being. Not for the half an hour you see, you know, no. All the 24 hours. When you sleep also, you think of the others good because they are you. Quantum physics says we are all one. But for the immune system, it would have been one syncytium. This whole room would be one mass of human cells. And the human body is a colony, colony, colony of one happy hundred trillion individual human beings called human cells. And they lived as individual human beings for millions of years before. For economic reasons, they all came together and said, why, let's live together. So our idea in modern medicine of treating liver disease, heart disease, mind disease, head disease, leg disease is foolish and damaging. And that is detrimental. We have to have one thing. And the best treatment is yoga, bhakti yoga, hatha yoga, whatever yoga it is, but yoga. What beautiful singing was going on here. Your blood pressure will come down. Did you know that? When you sing, your blood pressure comes down. And that noise, that bell ringing in the temple, bell ringing in the church, the vibration kills the bad germs in the, in the surroundings. That's why the bhaktas inside the temple, they live in such bad uh, atmosphere, no ventilation, nothing, but still they don't get in illness. Unless they become greedy, then they get it. <laughs> so, let me now tell you what I told you. Because the owner said, when you sell an idea to an audience, tell them first what you would tell them. Then tell them. Then at the end, tell them what you told them. So I told you initially, I talked about yoga. And then I tried to tell you something about yoga, which probably you thought was foolish. And then now I'm telling you that what I told you is, yoga is very simple. Yoga is being human and humane and following your instincts inside, which is to help others. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions welcome. Answers not guaranteed. <laughs>
So, uh, educate a human being to act justly, skillfully, but magnanimously under all circumstances of peace and war. Today's education is only skill, skill, skill and skill. No justice, no. Actually, three years ago, the CHEA in this country, Council for Higher Education Accreditation, the highest body of rules, the president was Bob Glidden. Robert Glidden was a good friend of mine. Bob said, you come here for our annual meeting in, in Phoenix. 350 presidents of American universities to meet there and come and talk to us on morals and ethics in education. That was a joy to do that. But of course, you see, they are aware, but not in India. India, we are going the other way around. We want to be more American than others. We don't want to teach even one day of complementary medicine. So 1910, what happened was this consortium appointed a man who was the headmaster. He's not a doctor, nobody. He was the headmaster of a high school to give a an idea as to how education must be made scientific. So these three people who joined together to be in the company, they were funding 34 medical colleges here to try their reductionist chemicals come from the byproducts of uh, naphtha. You know the by, the by when you prepare petrol, a clean, clean oil comes out. It's called nujol. Nujol in Latin is new oil. They didn't want to throw it. They appointed quote unquote scientists and said, try to see what it does. What does the scientist do? Gets a, you get rats, mice they call them, agitate them with a little adrenaline and give this. The rat becomes a zombie. So they said, oh, this is very good for human beings, make them zombies. That is where chlorpromazine was born. That is Largactyl, you take Largactyl, if you vomit on it, you take Largactyl, you do this Largactyl. What is that? Nujol. So you become a zombie. So the whole thing started from education, bring out the best to educate. You put in what you want the child to know. So tell the child, snow is black. So the world was told in this report called the Flexner report in 1910 saying that only 34 medical colleges are scientific because they are doing chemical studies. The rest of them are not scientific. They must be closed with the stroke of the pen. 34 medical colleges remain. Rest died. But luckily, recently, of course, the the Cairo practice went to the Supreme Court and uh, they got a, they, they started again. But in India, we don't have anything. They say Ayurveda we have got, but nobody patronizes Ayurveda. Unless you have patronized, you won't come up. China, you can practice Qigong, you can practice acupuncture in New York. Because the Chinese government patronized. But ever since 1947, we have condemned Ayurveda. Whenever I write about Ayurveda, they condemn me. Actually, when I became the Vice Chancellor, I said, this is an opportunity. So I wanted to give an Ayurvedic diploma to an MBBS doctor. So I started the course. I wrote to all the sort of government bodies. Nobody bothered. I again wrote. Nobody bothered. I started. Spent about the universities about 10 crores of rupees and had a big First year, I got six students, all free. One girl came from Guy's Hospital Medical School in London. One year over, in the second year, the Ayurvedic Council went against me in the High Court saying that this man is doing something unethical. It should not be done because Ayurveda is not allopathy. Such a foolish fellow. Ayurveda fellow is saying Ayurveda is not allopathy. He is the president of the Ayurveda Council. So I told that as allopathy is against disease. Ayurveda is also against disease. It is not homeopathy. Homeopathy is not against disease. It is for disease. Similis, similibus. The same thing produces disease and treatment. But nobody listened. And the High Court Supreme Judge, the Chief Justice said, illegal, stop the course, give the students 50 lakhs per, cap, per head compensation. Can you believe that? Still I survived in the university, I should have been thrown out, I survived. But now the Supreme Court Chief Justice tells me, you come to Supreme Court, there's a foolish judgment. And I told my lawyer, you go and tell in the court that Ayurveda is allopathy. He says, Allah negartar sir, you know, say, they all laugh at me. I said, allow me to argue. He says, High Court you can't argue without an LLB. Supreme Court you can argue. Now I have, I have put a PIL in the Supreme Court where I have told, I will argue. Foolish idea. It's all done because there's a money power. Money power. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry. All the youngsters who are aspiring to take up medicine, what do you suggest? I mean, now that we are all in America and Western schools is what they are um, open to, you know, to get the best of both. Um, as you said, we have to include the Western medicine when it is also, it has its own place. But how do we make sure that 
Yeah, there are now efforts, don't worry madam, which I started many years ago, that there's a trust called a future medicine, integrated medicine, which includes modern medicine and all the important things, the good from all the things, which I call as meta-medicine. You know, physics was written by Aristotle first, psychiatry, psychology was later, that's called metaphysics. So this is meta-medicine, so a new college, meta-medicine. We started already one in the Taksha University in Washington, I'm going there next week, and uh, we are starting one in India, and uh, we are doing this effort because a good medical course is very, very good. All that you have to be, you have to be a good, good human being. I told you about the Oxford study, we showed that when you are told it is, it is uh, morphia, they were giving saline, ordinary water, and said it is morphia, 100% relief. Then they found out doing fMRI, when you say it is morphia and the patient believes it, his brain produces medicine. When you don't say it is not and he doesn't believe it, nothing happens. So, to be a good doctor, you must be a good human being. You don't have to have any MD, MD, it's all useless. I still remember the compounder of my doctor when I was a child, he used to prescribe medicines for us and we were getting better. Today even the doctor prescribes, you are not all better because he prescribes medicines which are very bad. Now I will quickly show you what we can do with yoga. We have been doing this for a while. You know this gentleman, right? Ramdev, one man who has uh, helped spread the, at least a message. People, people criticize, you know, nit picking is a, is a, they say, oh, he didn't do the pranayama correctly. Are, he uh, made you aware of a thing called pranayama. And how many people? Millions, millions, simply millions. And he's doing wonderful research. He has got real good scientific researchers working for him and he's doing good. I will tell you one important thing about the medical part of when you breathe. You breathe belly button breathing, you breathe through the mouth, uh, abdomen, and the, and the benefit is each time you breathe, you see this is there's a wall here which cuts off the abdomen organs here from the chest and the heart. You get that? Now you see this heart here. Many of us are heartless, but we should be our heart. <laughs> you see these two pipes, one pipe taking water or blood into the heart the other pipe taking blood from outside. We call it as the, in the physics, preload and afterload. Some physics, okay? Now here is the wall. And the wall has holes for these two. Now each time you breathe out, the holes become small. Now you breathe in, holes become big. So the, the pipes become big. So the preload is reduced, afterload is reduced, the heart without any change can function doubly. In short, the heart output increases. That's what I'll show you. Now what happens here? You know this mode locking in physics? In the universe, the dominant rhythm locks all other rhythms. In the human body, breathing is the dominant rhythm. So if you know how to breathe properly, every single system in your body gets corrected. Do you understand that? And that's why yoga, pranam, breathing, etc. helps everything. Except one, the menstrual cycle. Because menstruation is not under the human control, it's under the moon's control. This is the beautiful thing which Western science was not believing till recently. But Varahamihira had written, Pratimas Arthava, Ujendu Hetu. A woman bleeds every month because of the Hindu, Hetu as the cause. The gravitational pull of the moon changes the menstrual cycle. So, other than menstruation, you can control everything with breathing. I will show you what happens with breathing. Your doctor will say, oh, your heart is absolutely fine, regular. If it is true, you are dead. But your heart, your heart is so irregular. Now, see this young boy, this is where I started about 35 years ago. This boy was about 12 or 13. And we made it breathe. This is your heart rate in the x-axis. That's your same heart rate in the y-axis, the mathematical delay. And as he is breathing, you see the change. I told you a child when it breathes, the heart goes fast. It doesn't breathe, it comes down. It's called heart rate variability. Now look at this boy. This is when he is breathing. See how irregular when he breathes really, it goes very fast. So we, after about 10 years, we got this better thing, computer, etc. So you see the heart rate here and heart rate here. The heart rate here, this is your heart. 
and as you are breathing, it's so beautifully going up and down. Uh, there's a science term called chaos. It's called healthy chaos. Everything in the human body must change from second to second. If it doesn't change, you are dead. Now, you see this one. Actually, these are ectopic beats. This, you sometimes get a missed beat. You say, oh, missed beat. You go to the doctor, he will poison you. We have been studying these ectopic bits for about 10 years and we found out ectopic bits are normal. Now with this study I have found, ectopic bit really makes the heart stronger. Now see, this really is stronger than before. Now you see this, this is a thing called atrial fibrillation. There your heart is still stronger, nothing happens to you. This is called again, six times syndrome, your atrial fibrillation. Now you see this one, your heart rate doesn't change at all. This patient died three hours after I took this recording. Now another ten years we have gone a little further. We have these wavelets, we got transformed them. It's called continuous wavelet transform, CWT, if you are one of those, uh, you know. Now, now see this, this is a real wavelet transform. This is your heart rate, real heart rate. So we write now. And that, see this, these pumpkins, they are all different shapes. This is a healthy heart, normal heart. Now you see this heart, this is absolutely all pumpkins are in row and these people are still better. Now you see this, this is a six sides of Now you see this one, this is absolutely regular here. This patient died immediately after this recording was taken. Now we found out, tried to find out whether we can change that into a normal one. And we, you know this right? All evidence based in medicine is surrogate evidence. Based on this, somebody got a Nobel Prize saying that global globe is warming. Because 18th century underwears and ladies were very big. Now it's become almost imperceptible. That's why it's very warm. So now we, we did a study over a period of years and we found that if you did real pranayama correctly, your regular heart can become irregular and you become a childlike. Now we went on doing something else which is not really only yoga but various things from Ayurveda. Here is a silver mesh and we put little water on the silver mesh and stimulate the little current then it will release nano silver particles onto the area. Nano silver particles everything will be very clean. <coughs> nothing, nothing grows there. Now I will show you this boy who cut his finger. This boy's finger was chopped off in a machine and he did have money to send it back. You know the, the thumb is sixty thousand dollars. This figure is forty thousand dollars to put it back, and even then it didn't get you know pink like that, not with normal. So what we did, we covered this with a silver mesh, cleaned it, gave the silver current, and see now, finger is growing, absolutely clean. Finger is growing, and finger has grown. And here is a police DGP in Chennai whose foot had to be amputated, but the man didn't want his amputation because he said if you amputate your foot, next Janma you will not have a foot at all. <laughs> so he didn't want, so I asked the surgeon to remove all the pus, let's see what happens. Same thing I did with this, he knows that you see his foot, he has got a normal foot, he is so happy about the whole thing. Here is a lady who has got this block here in the Iota. This is the kidneys, and all that she was completely blocked, no blood coming down, and she couldn't walk, and she had chest pain, etc. blood pressure 240, 140, not coming down with drugs. So I put that same thing on the abdomen, we have got a device now. And after three months you see, now see, like a horse stage, lot of new essence were formed. The kidneys have become normal, her blood pressure came down to normal, and she became all right, and she's all right here. Here is a very famous South Indian dancer, I won't tell you who she is, you all know her. And somebody removed her disc, her disc prolapse, this is the disc, and after that she has been in the wheelchair. So we put the same machine there and produced another disc and she is dancing now. And you will see her dancing before the So I just wanted to show some of these things and what other things can be done. But I don't have time, I won't tell you anything. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, see you inshallah some other time. Word is wrong.